This podcast was produced by ORFM Dunedin with support from New Zealand on the air. Welcome to Headscarves and Good Yarns with me, Amal Abdullahi. The show is all about talking about race, diversity, and everything in between, all in the hopes of empowering a more empathetic Aotearoa. We talk about all these huge life things through the lens of people's lives and stories. I hope every yarn you take a wee gem from it and expands your heart and mind just a wee bit more. Kia ora, alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Headscarves and Good Yarns. Thank you so much for tuning in. This episode of the show is going to be a little bit different than what I um, normally talk about. I think, you know, today we'll be talking about third spaces and I will get into, you know, what it is and what it means and how it relates to how we live life and live in community. Um, but it is, yeah, slightly different to th- you know, topics that I've spoken about on the show before. And, but I think it's really important to talk about and something that has kind of low key come up um, in previous episodes. Because if you think about community and if you think about how it is that we live together, um, you know, not only is it about the conversation and about the people, but it's also very much about the place. And that's something that I think we don't talk about a lot, but we feel the impacts of it, whether, you know, whether it's there are third spaces um, popping off or there aren't. Um, and there has been a decline of third spaces um, in the past, you know, five five to ten years I feel like there's a lot of research out there talking about the importance of reimagining those so you know that kind of implies that what's happening now isn't quite working Um, and the thing that I recently read that really honed in why I want to talk about third spaces today is this is amazing podcast that I listen to Um, it's called Code Switch um, produced by NPR and yeah, it's an amazing podcast show and they talk about all things like race, diversity, inclusion. And they had um, an episode earlier this month talking about a particular park in Queens, New York. And um, one thing I think when it comes to talking about migrant stories is that, you know, there's often things like injustice and suffering and trauma that are, are brought up a lot. Um, and you know, that is a reality of immigration and the migrant story. Um, I'm not here to say that it's not part of the story at all. Um, But I think another important aspect to um, the migrant story is third spaces. And so there's this particular park um, at in Queens, New York. It's called Flushing Meadows Corona Park. And, you know, Queens has historically been um, a big place um, for immigrant communities with a lot of um, migrant communities moving to Queens and and so it's pretty diverse in Queens and um, there's this particular park in Queens and it kind of is a testament to that immigration uh, history into the migrant story there because it is a lively and thriving third place for um, migrants to come together and to to be you know to have a space to play and to come together and to talk and to swap resources and to strengthen those relationships and those ties and so you know going to this park you know, it sounds like it's iconic for lots of different reasons, but it's pretty iconic to the migrant community. And I thought that was a, like, it was a really beautiful episode. So I would, I would would definitely recommend listening to it. But um, just, yeah, listening to that episode, it just made me think, oh gosh, how important third spaces are. Um, So if you're like, okay, Amal, what is, (laughs) what is a third space? Um, So it was defined by a sociologist back in the 80s called Ray Oldenburg. Um, And so, you know, the way that Ray has kind of 
defined what a third space is you know you think about your house um, your home being the first place um, and then you think about your second place being work and so your third space is um, outside of the your how your home and, and your workplace and it's a place where you know people can relax and come together and you know um Often they are cheap or free. Um, if you really want to get into the academics of it, there's like um, public face. There's like public owned um, third spaces, like parks and libraries and stuff like that. And then you have like privately owned third spaces, which would be like cafes and restaurants and bars and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, often third spaces are you know cheap or free. And I think when I think about this definition of what a third space is, I think one really important thing is that different walks of life can come together in a third space. Um, And also it's there to anchor community. And so it's a physical space that I feel like the way that um, third spaces work is that the physical space kind of facilitates or is the um, the anchor that brings people together because if that third space wasn't there then what is it that people would be pulled in by what is it that people would you know keep them coming back and staying there and and it's very much the fact that that third space um, is there and I yeah, I think it's really important to kind of to highlight how important third spaces are for community. Without those third spaces, you know, the community around it wouldn't be there. Um, you know, it's not like the sense of community and belonging is just kind of this magical word or comes from this magical place. Um, third spaces are really important for that. Um, and when Ray kind of defined what a third space was, um, there's also kind of characteristics to kind of look for um, that are common to third spaces. So the first one, um, that it's being a neutral ground. So people are there because they want to be there. People are free to come and go as they please with no um, consequences and there's like no financial, political or legal ties and there's no invitation needed um you know even if you don't go to this third place for days weeks months like when people see you because there is community there you know whenever you do come people will be happy to see you whenever they do get to see you um which is quite different to like your home or your workplace because um you know, there's a bit more structural or there's a bit more commitment asked of you. Like, it's not like you can just not go to work or not go home for days or or weeks or whatever with no um, explanation. You know, people, your family will be pretty upset with you or um, maybe your workplace will, will be giving you some kind of notice. So it, there's no sense of commitment in terms of you have to be there every single day you go when when you want to be there and you're free to come and go as you please. Um, Another important characteristic is that it's a place where it, it, it evens people out in the sense that it's, it doesn't really matter what your socioeconomic position is. You, there is no prerequisites for participation. And so, you know, there's a sense of community and, and commonality that tends to, to thrive because, you know, you, there's no sense, like there's no price of admission. And as I say that, I am aware that um, that won't always match the reality. If, you know, think about the systems that are in place in our society. I'm sure that there are some people, some people in groups um, and communities that will be, you know, maybe more over-policed when they do participate in third places compared to others. But, you know, the premise of a third place is that there's no, like, price of admission and in the sense that it doesn't really matter what your socioeconomic status is you know, you you are welcome. And because you're welcome on that basis, um, you know, there's more of an opportunity to focus on similarity. There's more of an fo- uh, opportunity to focus on, um, you know, what people bring to the table outside of their, like, the ways that, you know, 
the identities that society often um, highlights as being important. Um, and so, you know, things like status and class, which maybe in, in, in other places and spaces it could be um, a cause for tension or a cause for stress or a cause for potential division, um, it's just not relevant in a third place. Um, another thing about third places is that conversation is really the main yeah the main point of third of third places because people can come together and hang out and so you know these conversations they're anywhere ranging from stimulating engaging um lively um you know it's a they tend to be a safe place for people to share their ideas and dreams and and this kind of like enriching conversation is often you know a key point of third places um next thing is that they are or they should be accessible and accommodating um you know ideally these third places are easy to access you know you don't necessarily even have to drive to to go there um you can be there for a long time with no sense of like you need to reserve a spot um and they're often low cost in the sense that if there is food or drink there you know it's usually free or inexpensive but again this is not essential but you know it's a sense that they're in spots where it's easy for people to get to um and then also another characteristic of third spaces is that you know there's people who who are regulars they're regular regular schmegler people who hang out there um that's an important place for them to be to be with their community and so it's which is awesome because if there's no if we go back to the earlier point of like you come and go as you please that means that there will always be newcomers but then there will also be regulars to help like the newcomers feel welcomed and encouraged which is awesome um another characteristic is that they keep a low profile um so you know it's like you want your third place to be comfortable and approachable and you know that's often the vibes of these third places is they're not um usually very extravagant or anything like that um they're comfortable modest approachable um you know like how your living room should be for for community and for people to come through um you know you want it to be a place where people can feel comfortable and they don't have to like show up in a particular way um so yeah, they keep a low profile. Um, another characteristic is that it's a playful atmosphere. Um, and so again, it kind of matches with, you know, the sense that people are there to have conversations, people are there to be in community. And so there's that sense of um, that, that, that good feeling that keeps people coming back time and time again. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that it never happens because we are humans, but often third places are, um, you know, they're not the place for um, tension or animosity. Like, that's not really the vibes of third places. They're there for joy and laughter and, you know, good vibes. Um, another characteristic of third places is it's a home away from home essentially so you know when people engage with these third places they should feel safe and steady and that sense of like having their cup filled after spending time there um you know and some people also may feel a sense of ownership or that um a piece of your who you are as a person and your identity is fixed in that place um because you want it because that's exactly how you feel about your own house and third places should feel like a home away from home. Um, and third places can be all types of, you know, things. As I was saying before, they can be like parks or libraries or museums or places of worship. Um, they can be restaurants, cafes. Um, it can be all types of things. Libraries, um, yeah, Th what how third spaces can manifest um it can be in, in so many different forms um 
But I think those characteristics and that definition that good old Ray um, defined way back when is a yeah perfect way to kind of understand what a third place is. Um, and if you're thinking, well, why are these third places so important? And I think, you know, third places are so in- important for community to flourish and to build connections. Um, you know, when you think about our first and second spaces, you know, your home is for your for you and your family and for maybe that more like any of you know your friends that more intimate community um and then you have your workplace which you know community and work can go together um but again it's for people who for your colleagues it's not just for everyone and the same goes for your home like there's kind of barriers around that where it's not accessible for everyone and I'm not saying that it should be I mean your home is for your family and friends and that kind of intimate community and of course your workplace is for you and your colleagues and that and that wider workplace community Um, but it's so important to have a third space that is more neutral um, for community and in all its in all its forms and variations to come together and have a place to be um and i think the importance of third places will be- you know will become even more important because if you think about the fact that you know our populations are growing and cities are going to expand um there's also a housing crisis at the moment um and so it's a question of like where do people go to be and to hang out um and there's also a loneliness crisis as well i um can't remember the stats from when i was doing my research but you know especially since covid um you know the numbers of people reporting that they are feeling lonely in their lives has increased and yes it's um increased in particular demographics like um older people um but it's increased in all you know demographics it's not just older people saying this it's younger people saying this too you know like young people moving to new cities and feeling really lonely even if there's you know places like where there's lots to do and and places where there's you know really exciting things and lots of people um there's still people you know feeling quite lonely you know cities like new york and and la and london um and so with these things with you know, cities expanding and there's a housing crisis and a loneliness crisis as well as a cost of living crisis. And so there's less places where um, where it is, you know, cheap or free to kind of hang out in a place. Um, you know, you have to pay to be there for a certain time, you know, if you're if you're hanging out in you know, outside of like cafes, restaurants and bars, um, it is pretty costly to hang out in third spaces. Um, and also there's a sense, sense of inaccessibility, you know, as our cities have expanded, um, a lot of the time you need to be able to drive to get to third places. And, you know, that cancels out groups and communities that don't have um, the ability to drive, whether it's our young people um, or whether it's our older community as well. Um, and I think when I specifically when I think about New Zealand and, and third places here in New Zealand, a huge one here in Aotearoa is nature. Um, but when I think about it, you know, even that's also kind of inaccessible because a lot of the time you need to be able to drive to to explore the outdoors here in Aotearoa. And so there's like the petrol costs involved with that and then even with public transport it's not always easy to get to um, natural places and then even the cost associated with exploring um, nature is is also not cheap you know for example in the past couple of years I've like you know started to dip my toes into the tramping hiking world and um the cost associated with that I can I can definitely understand why we didn't do it growing up we just wouldn't have had the money um you know especially considering how big my family is we just wouldn't have had the money to be able to do that um yeah we definitely wouldn't have been able to have the money 
to do that because it's not only you know a lot of the tramps you have to like drive to get to the actual tramp itself it's like the cost of food the cost of gear you know packs and tramping boots alone are hundreds and hundreds of dollars so it's it's pretty expensive so I can definitely understand that costs is a big barrier um, to accessing third spaces and um, you know if you think about the cheap free places um, it's getting harder to to access to yeah use them as well you know this is going to sound uh, this is definitely going to expose like how um, nerdy I was in school <laughs> um, but the library was a really important third space to me and my friends when we were teenagers because um, we could come and go as we pleased we didn't have to pay any money to be there and we could be there for as long as we wanted and so so yeah we'd always pull up or after school um sometimes working <laughs> sometimes most of the time just hanging out <laughs> unless it was exam period then we were on the grind but most of the time it was just for us to get together and hang out and talk and um you know, the library was really easy for us to get to. We could just walk there. And then when we all had to go home at the, um, after a couple of hours, it was really easy for all of us to get home because it was so close to all the bus stops. Um, for a lot of us, we could walk home. Um, and it was a really beautiful third space. But, you know, over the years, I feel like funding for libraries have been decreasing. And then even like the opening hours of library libraries have decreased and so it's not as accessible as it used to be back in the day and so I think yeah third spaces are so important for community to flourish it's so important for one sense of belonging and identity um, but they aren't being used as much anymore and I think it's really important to be having this conversation because we could be um reimagining third spaces and how to how to make it work because I think you know when you think about you know bigger picture when you think about the world and the things that need to change and how our system needs to change I think you know a lot of it would be easier to achieve if we lived more communally and if we had um richer a richer sense of community because you know things like social cohesion and you know wanting to be a better ally a better friend um a lot of that kind of comes from knowing each other and understanding each other and I'm not saying that you you know have to know everyone intimately one-on-one um but you know building the sense of com- compassion and I'd like to make a note here I use the word compassion because I don't think you necessarily need to understand you know how they always say that saying about empathy of like you need to know how to walk in someone else's shoes I think you know a sometimes that is impossible because there will be some things that would just never be part of your experience. So, you know, how can you walk in someone else's shoes? But, you know, you don't have to walk in someone else's shoes to have a sense of compassion and understand that we need to show up for each other. Um, And I think that sense of compassion, it goes hand in hand with community. Um, If you think about um, that sense of belonging and identity and the wider impacts that has on people's well-being and um, how we share resources with each other. Um, It all comes from community, but there needs to be places and spaces for that community to to thrive to begin with. And so I think, yeah, third spaces are just so important. Um, So, so important. I think it's really important that we reimagine what that looks like. You know, for example... Um, when I think about third spaces and um, migrant well-being, and I'm just thinking about my own personal experience, um, how important third spaces have been to the Somali community. I mean, 
the mosque, for example, is a really, really important third space. And um, the way that people huddle around each other and get to know each other and look after each other, it's so important. It's so important. I think the mosque has been, yeah, a really important third space, third space, sorry, um, for the Somali community and and in a wider sense the Muslim community as well, because um, it's a space where you don't have to, like you just you just show up, you just show up and you you come and go as it suits you. But there will always be someone there if you ever need to ask for help. There will be someone there if you need to anchor yourself um, to places that are outside of your home and your workplace. Um, that anchoring yourself to the mosque has been so important to so many people. Um, and I can't imagine like what the richness of the Muslim and Somali Somali community would be like without having the mosque. Um, and I think another important place for um, my community, and I don't want to speak for other migrant communities, but, you know, the importance of having like, you know, our cultural food shops and how people get together to buy the ingredients for you know, food from home and how that's also a really important place for community and the conversations that people have there and the way that people swap resources and people really get to know each other and that's just so important. Um, And again, I can't imagine the richness of the community without third spaces like that. It's so important. And I think one thing that I really want to... um, really want to emphasize here is you know there are a lot of I'm not saying every single Somali person in New Zealand is a refugee Um, there have been some who have migrated like my family for example Um, you know but there is a proportion of Somali um, of the Somali community who are refugees and if you think about you know the resettlement process here for refugees um the support provided um and the systems in place to provide that support it's really it's quite short term in the sense that you know you get all of the support in the beginning when you're settling into New Zealand and then kind of after that um there's really not much else and um third places um are really important to kind of continue that support and to continue that sense of community because, you know, there's a lot of support in the beginning, but then it's not sustainable and it's not long term. Um, But third places um, are really important to, you know, kind of step in um, when those initial supports are gone because you have that sense of community there and when you have community um there's a there's a richness there because you know you have people who have got your back you've got people who um you can be in relationship with um there's a sense of belonging which is so important um you know research shows time and time again that having a sense of belonging um and anchoring your identity in community um has a lot of positive um impacts on one's well-being and it's really really important um it is really really important um there was a study done in Canada um because uh there's there's a really big um difference in where migrant communities are concentrated in Canada and you know very concentrated in urban areas in the cities but not so much in like the smaller towns and so um there was this research done um to see you know how to attract and retain migrants in smaller towns and you know away from those big urban centers and a huge part of that um the research showed was having um third spaces and having third spaces that were you know um 
accessible and safe to use um, by the community, you know, places where people wanted to be at, um, places where people could be at. Um, that was, you know, a really significant part of um, the migrant experience and and having a positive experience as well um and how third spaces um were had like a really big positive impact on migrant communities and if there if there weren't those um third spaces then people just wouldn't want to migrate there um because you know when you are migrating to a new country having that sense of community is so important right because um you know even I'm just talking for myself personally now we don't have any um extended family that live here in Aotearoa um but those third spaces you know really enabled that sense of community to grow and um you know now we had like substitute aunties and uncles, which we wouldn't have had before if it, if it weren't for those third places. So it's it's really important um, to the migrant story, third spaces, and um, so it doesn't surprise me that that's what the research said. Um, it really doesn't surprise me that is what the research said about that at all. Um, I think another really important thing about third spaces is that they do provide the sense of belonging you know when you think about belonging um it isn't just like a magical place or like this magic word you know it's something that is um earned through safety and through community and through trust um and community safety and trust are really anchored and propped up by third spaces um and so it's really important that we have third spaces for that sense of community you know imagine if um if we did have more third spaces because they are they aren't being used as much as they used to um you know a lot of our um relaxation is a bit more individualized these days you know like it's you know real talk because this I'm including myself in this it's a lot easier to relax at home because it's way easier to kind of scroll through Netflix and to find a show there than to leave your house and you know go to the park or um go to the library or you know like it's a lot easier to to live more to live life in more individually in an individualistic mindset rather than living communal communally if you think about the way that people would relax um back in the day compared to now you know back in the day third spaces would feature more than now where we'd probably just retreat more to our first place our first space being home sorry my brain keeps on trying to combine space and place <laughs> so now we have third spaces <laughs> um so forgive me for for keep on saying spaces but um you know our yeah our lives have become a bit more individualized and i think we're feeling the impacts of that because people are feeling very lonely and if you think about you know how hard it is now to find a sense of community and to find a sense of belonging it isn't easy um it really isn't easy at all um we kind of tend to stick to um our like individual intimate communities and there's nothing wrong with um intimate communities because you know your friends and your family like your loved ones um they mean a great deal and and they contribute to our life quality so much um but if you think about our wider sense of community it's a lot harder and there's you know a lot of lonely people out there and 
And I think it's really important that we create spaces where people can feel that sense of belonging because it brings nothing but goodness and nothing but richness, just knowing that we're all living together in community um, and having a space for that is is really important. Um, I found this um, research, because a lot of the research that I found around third spaces, um, they were you know, conducted in countries where the populations are huge, like um, America and Canada and, you know, the United Kingdom, like really big places. Um, But I found this particular one, um, and it was based here in um, Pōneke and here in Wellington, and it was just this um, research was to see... um, how in their own neighborhoods their understanding and perceptions perception sorry of third places and how that relates to their like sense of community and belonging and and social capital and um you know the important third places that were highlighted were um, nature related places like parks and walking tracks and beaches the second one was you know places where um people could participate in activities like fairs and events and like, you know, pub quizzes at bars. And, um, you know, this research research showed that all of these third places that were identified to be important to the participants of this research, that it was really important that these third places were inclusive and accessible. And, you know, as soon as that... um, the third place begins to um, be exclusive or inaccessible, people will just not participate with these third places. Um, And that having these third places is really important because um, it increases their sense of community and belonging and that therefore then trickles into their quality of life and well-being as well. And, you know, the more that these third places were used, you know, that there was an increased sense of community and belonging. And so, and also another cool thing that came out of this research is that, you know, if the third place was constructed in a way where it was like made with, with care, you know, with care meaning that the you know the needs of the community that would then go on to use this um this um place was considered into how this third place was constructed um the more the 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 higher inclusivity and accessibility um was built into the third place the more people would use it um And then you'd have more interactions with people from other neighbourhoods. And so people that they wouldn't have met or interacted with otherwise, um, now there was these opportunities for new interactions. And so it's really important for these third places um, to kind of be the space um, to facilitate these connections that otherwise wouldn't have happened um and you know the richness of these connections and community then impact people's quality of life and well-being um and i think that is so important that is really really important um and you know when you think about third places and how they're being used now i think there's lots of room for reimagination and how they can serve our communities better um like one thing that i thought was really interesting was when i was doing research for this episode um the um the term hostile architecture and um you know hostile architecture architecture in the sense that um it's just not like people friendly like there's just no way that people would want to use it um but hostile architecture is cropping up more and more these days in our public spaces um to um deter um you know those from vulnerable communities like you know homelessness um to stop hanging about um and even here in Wellington, you can kind of see how how hostile architecture 
is in play. Um, you know, for example, in the city, there used to be a huge public library. I mean, that library was... It was so big. It, there were many, many levels, um, and it served so many different communities. Like there was always young people hanging out there. Um, there was always um, people from the vulnerable community there, um, older people there. Like just everyone from all different walks of life were would use the library. Um, and then you would um, have. And then there was an earthquake back in 2017, 2018. I can't quite remember now. It honestly could have even been earlier than that. Earlier than that. But years ago, there was like an earthquake and um, the library was shut down because it was deemed to be unsafe. Um, and ever since then, it's kind of been just sitting there. I think the council has been really thinking about what to do with the library space but in response to that um, there have been these like little libraries that have kind of cropped up and some of them have migrated to communities like within suburbs um, but in the CBD anyway there's like two little um, libraries and the architecture of them is definitely um, hostile and I've noticed that you know, maybe perhaps where the vulnerable community would have gone before, um, they're not at the library as much anymore. And um, I, yeah, I and I think some of those elements that were designed have also meant that it's hostile to kind of not just the vulnerable community, but to everyone. And even thinking about, this is not specific to Wellington, but when I was doing research for this, um, a researcher was talking about in their own city, um, parks have become a bit more hostile with less bench space and um, no public bathrooms. Um, and those were designed specifically so, you know, members of the vulnerable community wouldn't be at the park. Um, but, you know, a lack of bench space and um, a lack of public bathrooms have have been hostile to everyone. And so the parks are not a, like a welcomed um, and well-used third space anymore. Um, and so I think there's definitely a lot of room um, for reimagination when it comes to how third spaces are constructed, um, how they cater to the needs of community um, and how to keep them accessible. There's a lot of room for reimagination. Um, and I think my final piece to this puzzle for today's episode is kind of thinking about the importance, you know, now that we've established that third places um are really important for community and for connection and that richness, um, you know, how that translates to how third spaces can be really important for um, social cohesion because, you know, if you're creating spaces where people that normally wouldn't meet can um, and opening up those relationships, um, that definitely would increase a sense of compassion, that definitely would increase um people's understanding of the world and expanding their world lens um, because, you know, you're being forced into places where you're not um, necessarily living in your own echo chamber. And I'm not saying that, you know, sometimes third places, they can be a bit of an echo chamber, um, but, you know, you're being forced to... Um, reside in, in places that are outside of your first and second place, outside of your home and workplace. And so you can um, you can interact with people that you normally wouldn't. And I think when that happens, it understands, you know, your understanding of the world and how other people experience um, the world as it is. Um, and when you think about the power in that you can see how third spaces would be so important to um how yeah third spaces can be so important to you know honoring titiriti and um learning how to um you know learning how to change our systems in a way where it serves our community better um 
and serves the needs of our community better. Like when I think about um, being anti anything, anti racist, um, yeah, anti anything, and anti ableist. How important third space, like the role that third spaces can play in that because a huge part of changing systems like that and being a better ally is having that sense of community and that sense of trust I mean you know being a better ally of course education is a really powerful tool and you know that onus is on people to do that education for themselves whether it's you watch those documentaries you read those books you listen to that podcast um but I think that education kind of comes to life um when community um is is involved I think you know, having that knowledge is so important. But, you know, for a lot of us, the way that we understand the world is um, from that emotional sense. And, you know, you can have access to all of the information, but if you don't exercise the muscle that is compassion and if you are not in community it can be a lot harder to imagine um you know the knowledge that you've acquired how it impacts people around you especially if you're you know living in an echo chamber and so I think it's so important to um to have those third spaces and to have community um Involved when it comes to being anti anything and and learning how to be a better ally, um, third spaces are so important to that. Because um, if you're not interacting, you know, if you don't have those third places, how often is it that you're going to interact with um, other people that you normally wouldn't otherwise? Um, it's it's impossible it just doesn't happen um without those third spaces and so I think it's um really important and if you think about the importance of third spaces for you know learning how to honor titiriti better that would be so um you know that would be so cool if we reimagined third spaces and so you know it could allow the space for us to be um better treaty partners and on a titiriti a lot better you know like a huge uh, a, if you th- like break down the principles of the treaty and if you break down the principles of like te ao Māori like community is so important um and having those relationships is so important um and third spaces I think are really a key and like essential to building that sense of community because you know where else would you have space for whakawhanaungatanga for relationships and for getting to know each other um you know where else would you have third spaces that act as equalizers for people of all walks of life to come together and to talk about things and when we know each other better, I think we're in a position where we will be able to understand each other better too. Um, and so there is a lot of power in third spaces when it comes to um, reimagining, you know, living in a society that serves everyone Um right now. You know, there's a lot of disconnect at the moment. I feel like especially it's always been happening but especially as of late um I've seen a lot of anti-Maori rhetoric and you know whenever you hear read comments like that there's just a huge lack of disconnect and there's this sense of you know they're taking from us and I'm not saying that third spaces are going to solve everything I think realistically the solution is going to be a bit of a bit of everything it's going to be nuanced and layered and complex um but you know if 
all I'm saying is that if, if there was more community, you know, what would our definition of us mean? If there was more community, you know, what would us look like? Who would be included in that us? Um, and I feel like that would be a lot richer if there were third spaces that were um, used more. And so I think when, you know, a key question to to pose for for now and for the future is, well, how can we reimagine third spaces? And so they are more inclusive and they're accessible to, you know, our communities and the different, you know, the varying needs that communities need. Um, you know, even, you know, when considering these needs from the like practical logistical things of like seats and hours and, you know, where these third spaces are located to um, the wider things like language that is used to invite people to these third spaces and um, how is it that community will be fostered um, in these third spaces. I think we definitely need to ask ourselves that question of how can we reimagine third spaces so that they are accessible and inclusive for all communities um, that exist here in Aotearoa. And the more that we ask ourselves that question, I think, you know, it will be, we will just watch communities thrive and I think it's really important that we need community to thrive because we're living in a world where people are feeling lonely we're living in a world where you know there's a housing crisis um costs are high we are living in a world where cities um will have to grow and expand um to meet our like growing population um and I think there's so much beauty to third spaces when they're done well. Um, it's so important that we ask ourselves, um, how is it that we can reimagine um, third spaces? Because I think not only are third spaces important for that sense of community and sense of belonging and identity, but third spaces are really important for social cohesion and compassion. And I think when those things are there, the changes that we are craving as a community um, need, they will come. Um, and so, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and, you know, a golden nugget that you'll take away from this episode is kind of m mulling over how you currently use third spaces now and how you'd like to use third spaces in the future. Um, thank you for tuning into this episode of Headscarce and Good Yarns and we'll catch you for the next one. Thank you for tuning in into another episode of Headscarce and Good Yarns. To keep spinning the yarns, let us know your thoughts. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Headscarfs and Good Yarns or email us at Headscarfs and Good Yarn at gmail.com. This podcast was produced by ORFM Dunedin with support from New Zealand on the air.